The Battle of pont Valain was an important battle in the Hundred Years' War between France and England. It was fought on 4 December 1370 in the Sarthe region between English forces that had broken away from the army commanded by the English knight, Sir Robert Knowles and a French army under the newly appointed Constable of France. Bertrand du Guesclin. The battle was in fact two separate engagements, one at pont Valain and a smaller one at the nearby town of Ars. They are sometimes named as separate battles. Though the engagements were comparatively small scale, they were significant because the English were routed, bringing to an end their 30-year reputation for invincibility in open battle. Background Robert Knowles landed at Calais in August 1370 with an army of about 6,000 mounted men and undertook a campaign in the style of a plundering raid through northern France. He approached Paris on 24 September and tried to draw out the French to battle, but they did not take the bait and by October Knowles had moved south and was marching towards Vendôme. He captured and garrisoned castles and monasteries between the rivers Loire and Loire and positioned himself to be able to march into Poitou or, alternatively into southern Normandy if his king, Edward III, concluded an agreement with Charles II of Navarre, who was offering his lands in northern Normandy as a base for the English. Many of the subordinate captains, who considered themselves better born than Knowles, deplored his apparent lack of martial spirit. They found a leader in Sir John Minsterworth, an ambitious and unstable knight from the Welsh marches who mocked Knowles as the old freebooter. Meanwhile Charles V of France had invested his best knight, Bertrand du Guesclin, with the office of Constable of France, and tasked him with the mission of destroying Knowles's army. In November du Guesclin concentrated his forces at Con where he was joined by reinforcements under the Marshals Mouton de Blainville and Arnoul de Rodrium as well as a Breton contingent under Olivier de Clisson. He was thus able to raise about 4,000 men. A second army of about 1,200 men was formed in Knowles's rear at Chatellero under Marshal Onsair, which then moved towards Knowles from the east while Du Guesclin began to move on him from the north. Knowles, aware that the French were closing in, now proposed to withdraw westward into Brittany before he could be surrounded. But his captains violently disagreed, preferring to find winter quarters where they were and to continue to raid the surrounding countryside, confident they could defeat any French attack. As a result, the army divided. Knowles took a contingent including his own retinue west towards Brittany. The remainder, numbering about 4,000 men, stayed in the region of the Loire Valley in three groupings. One commanded jointly by Sir Thomas Grandison and Sir Hugh Calverley, the other two by Walter, Lord Fitzwalter and by Minsterworth. The Battle Du Guesclin left Con with his army on 1 December and marched south at great speed, arriving near Le Mans on 3 December. He received intelligence that Grandison's and Fitzwalter's forces were spread out in encampments between pont Valain and Mayotten. Despite his army's exhaustion, he ordered an immediate night march, arriving at pont Valain to attack the English at dawn on 4 December. Taken completely by surprise, Grandison tried to retreat northwards but the French caught up with him beneath the walls of the Chateau de la Fane. In a bitter hand-to-hand -hand fight the French took heavy casualties but Grandison's forces were virtually wiped out and he was taken prisoner. The English archers, who had been the architects of victory in every previous battle with the French, were badly positioned but even so failed to penetrate the armour of Du Guesclin's troops or to break up the French lines. Meanwhile, Sans Air was approaching Fitzwalter's contingent from the east. The English fled south to the fortified abbey at Vars, which was immediately assaulted by Sans Air and when Du Guesclin came up to support him, the English were massacred. Du Guesclin claimed Fitzwalter as his prisoner. He was held prisoner until he was able to raise a ransom by mortgaging his Cumberland estates on ruinous terms to Edward III's mistress Alice Perez. 
Sir John Minsterworth's score managed to escape into Brittany following Knowles, who was pursued unsuccessfully by Olivier de Clisson. Sir Hugh Calverley escaped into Poitou. About 300 English survivors, plus the garrisons of various castles Knowles had occupied, fled south towards Bordeaux but they were pursued by Du Guesclin and Sancerre and, shortly after they had crossed the Loire, were caught and virtually wiped out beneath the walls of the castle of Brescia, which though held for the English would not open its gates to them. Aftermath Knowles and Minsterworth passed the winter in Brittany and then attempted to lead their companies to the port of St. Matthew to take ship for England. But they were harried all the way by Olivier de Clisson and there were only two ships to take them. So most of their men were left on the shore to be massacred by the French. In England, Minsterworth accused Knowles of responsibility for the disaster. In July 1372, the King's Council decided the main fault lay with Knowles, who was stripped of the lands he had been given as fee for organising the campaign. Minsterworth was arrested and charged with traducing Knowles, but escaped and fled to France, where he changed sides and entered the service of Charles V.